In this specimen, the lungs, heart, great vessels, trachea, and the esophagus, as well as the diaphragm, were removed as a block from the cadaver and then dissected. The parietal pleura and the pericardium have been removed. We are looking at the sternocostal aspect of the lung. These black spots are due to the carbon deposits. These red patches are due to the silicone that was injected in the cadaver. The right lung has three lobes, the upper lobe, middle lobe, and the lower lobe. This fissure is the oblique fissure, which extends from T2 vertebra to the sixth costal cartilage. In this part, it separates the upper lobe from the lower lobe. And in this part here, as you can see, it's separating the middle from the lower lobe. I'm now running the pointer along the horizontal fissure, which separates the middle lobe from the upper lobe. And this fissure runs along the fourth rib. Okay. The left lung has only two lobes, the upper lobe and the lower lobe, separated by this oblique fissure. This is the apex of the lung. The base of the lung, which is here, beneath the lung, just above the diaphragm, cannot be seen in this specimen as it is lying on the diaphragm. The first rib goes across like this. And sometimes you can see some other impressions caused by the ribs. In this posterior view, note the esophagus. At this point, the esophagus pierces the diaphragm, which is at the vertebral level T10. These are the vagi which form a plexus on the esophagus. Right here is the cut edge of the descending aorta. This little structure here is the cut edge of the azyga swain. What is this structure that I'm pointing to lying just anterior to the esophagus at this point? That is the left atrium, and that is what forms the base of the heart. We are looking at the inferior aspect of the diaphragm. Note the central tendon in this part. This is the inferior vena cava piercing the central tendon. The inferior vena cava pierces the diaphragm at vertebral level T8. Right here is the esophagus as it has come into the abdominal cavity, having pierced the diaphragm at vertebral level uh, T10. You can also see some of these branches, these arteries, which are branches of the inferior phrenic as they're going to supply the diaphragm. And note the fibers of the diaphragm, how they are fanning out all along. Let us now focus our attention onto the large vessels and related structures. The posterior most structure here is the esophagus. Lying anterior to it is the trachea. I want you to note the C-shaped cartilages in the tracheal wall. These are the branches coming from the aortic arch. Can you name them? This large one is the brachiocephalic trunk. In the middle is the left common carotid. And this one here is the left subclavian. Crossing these big arteries and the arch is this vein, which is the left brachiocephalic vein. You can perhaps appreciate the cut edge of the right brachiocephalic vein, where my pointer is resting. These two join together to form the superior vena cava that you would see in another specimen. Let us now examine 
the medial surface of the left lung. In this view, we can see the medial surface as well as the diaphragmatic surface of the lung, though this demarcation right here may not be that clearly visible. Here is the apex of the lung. These impressions are caused by structures which were related to the lungs. Above the hilum, this here is the impression caused by the aortic arch. This impression here is caused by the descending aorta, and this is the cardiac impression. Right here is the oblique fissure separating the upper lobe from the lower lobe. The main structures seen at the hilum are the left pulmonary artery above, the left main bronchus in the middle, see how narrow it is as compared to the right one, and the pulmonary veins right here, one there and another one here. It may not be possible for you to appreciate the separation of these two pulmonary veins on camera. This black spot here and this one here, these are the hilar lymph nodes.